on an operating system far less advanced than the one you're using right now. A new web browser came into existence, born of the ashes of a legendary browser that came before it. This new browser promised to define a better way to experience the internet. This is the story of Mozilla Firefox. Firefox, rediscover the web. If you know your tech history, then you'll know we need to rewind a few years before the introduction of Firefox to provide some context. The story of Firefox actually begins with Netscape Navigator, one of the very first web browsers. Netscape was acquired by AOL in 1998, and it was a poor match from the start. As if that weren't bad enough, at the same time, Microsoft finally discovered the internet and decided they'd better begin investing in a browser of their own. Through some questionable business tactics, on top of AOL's own mishandling of Netscape, the market share of Netscape quickly dwindled from a high of almost 90% in 1996 to less than 15% by June of 2000. The story might have cleanly ended there, with the browser fading quietly into obscurity, but for one brilliantly prescient move from Netscape. On January 23, 1998, Netscape made two announcements. First, that Netscape Communicator would be free. Second, that the source code would also be free. The following day, Jamie Zawinski of Netscape registered Mozilla.org. The project took its name Mozilla after the original code name of the Netscape Navigator browser, which was a portmanteau of Mosaic and Godzilla, and used it to coordinate the development of the Mozilla Application Suite, the open source version of Netscape's internet software, Netscape Communicator. The idea would be for Mozilla to become a technology provider for companies such as Netscape, who would then commercialize their open source code. Mozilla core developers set to work, attempting to build a competent browser from the Netscape Navigator code. But after some effort, it was deemed unsalvageable and ultimately scrapped. In October 1998, the tough decision was made to instead rewrite the browser using a cross-platform user interface library and layout engine. As it happened, Netscape had already been working on the new Gecko layout engine for some time, so this was to become the base for the new layout engine. In December of 1998, the first release of this work was made available as a preview, and it looked as if a new browser might be soon available. Unfortunately, the Mozilla team's plans for a much grander suite of applications resulted in a number of delays to the release. Eventually though, the first version of the new browser was officially released on June 5, 2002, and received strong praise. Despite the strong reviews, AOL decided to end their corporate support for browser development on July 15, 2003. Once again, this might have been the end of the browser, except for the fact that the Mozilla Foundation was chartered on the same day, and the Mozilla Foundation became the official stewards of the project. The new browser project began as an experimental branch of the Mozilla project by Dave Hyatt, Joe Hewitt, and Blake Ross. They felt the commercial requirements of Netscape sponsorship and developer-focused feature creep had compromised the user experience of the Mozilla browser. To combat what they saw as the Mozilla suite's increasing bloat, they opted to simplify and create a standalone browser with which they intended to replace the Mozilla suite. The first release of the browser was made available in September of 2002. At this point, it was decided the browser would be named Phoenix in reference to the browser rising from the ashes of Netscape Navigator after it was killed by Internet Explorer. With the weight of Mozilla's suite shed, releases began rapidly appearing, with new point releases available every few weeks. Many features were introduced during this period, and the Gecko layout engine was frequently updated as well. In April of 2003, the name was changed from Phoenix to Firebird after the Phoenix BIOS company threatened legal action and charged Mozilla with a trademark dispute. Firebird saw mostly bi-monthly releases and introduced features such as a new theme called Q, smooth scrolling, and support for the newly released Mac OS X. The Mozilla community, however, was still unhappy with the Firebird name, and so on February 9, 2004, the name was officially changed to Mozilla Firefox, a nickname for the Red Panda, Firefox's mascot. The name was trademarked so as to avoid any further future naming changes, and finally, Mozilla's browser had a permanent name. Firefox version 1.0 was released on November 9, 2004. The launch of version 1.0 was accompanied by a great amount of fanfare, including a fan-organized campaign to run a full-page ad in the New York Times. With the release of Firefox 1.0, Mozilla had built momentum for their browser. Microsoft had accumulated quite a bit of ill will with their monopoly-like tactics in the browser space, and their Internet Explorer browser had also started slipping in quality. 
Firefox appeared on the scene as a fast, fresh alternative to the status quo. Early versions of Firefox included important features such as pop-up blocking and support for extensions. It also popularized the concept of tab browsing for the masses, though while it is often credited as being the first browser with tabs, tab browsing actually owes its origins to the internet work browser. Firefox 2 saw the creation of an anti-phishing extension created by Google, and Firefox 3 brought a redesigned download manager and separate themes for different operating systems. By this point, Firefox had become a household name and version 3 had more than 8 million unique downloads the day it was released, setting a Guinness World Record. As a result of constant innovation and a focus on speed and user experience, Firefox rapidly grew in usage, from around 5% in 2005, and peaking around 34% in July of 2010. While Mozilla was focused on competing with Microsoft's Internet Explorer and improving Firefox, another company was looking to enter the market. Google CEO Eric Schmidt initially opposed the development of an independent web browser for many years. He stated that, at the time, Google was a small company. Having come through the bruising browser wars, I didn't want to do that again. However, after co-founders Sergey Brin and Larry Page hired several Mozilla Firefox developers and built a demonstration of Chrome, Schmidt said that it was so good that it essentially forced me to change my mind. Google Chrome was released in September 2008, so named because Chrome was associated with speed and minimal user interface. For the first time, Firefox was no longer the scrappy underdog, but rather an established player trying to defend market space. Despite this, Firefox had a number of important developments happen during this period. Firefox 3.6 was released in 2010 and included a number of improvements to user experience and web standards updates, and Firefox 4 was released in 2012, which saw the update of Gecko, Firefox's browser engine, to version 2.0. And, in 2011, the first version of Firefox Mobile for Android was released. Starting with Firefox 5, Mozilla adjusted their release cadence to keep pace with Google Chrome. This would see the rapid releases of Firefox's 5 through 9 in 2011, 10 through 16 in 2012, and 17 through 23 in 2013. Firefox would see a slight logo tweak from versions 23 to 56, as well as a number of advances in security, privacy, and web media support. Unfortunately, despite continued progress and development, Firefox would lose market share every year to Google Chrome. Some of this was due to Chrome having a laser focus on being a good user experience, but just as much of it was also self-inflicted by Mozilla, by allowing themselves to be distracted by Firefox OS and other projects. Said Sebastian Peyrat, an Argentinian programmer who moved to Chrome, Mozilla made a huge mistake by letting Google leapfrog them with Chrome. They had the advantage, and they weren't quick enough to improve Firefox. Put candidly by Mozilla CEO Chris Beard, Firefox didn't keep up with the market and what people really want. A lot of hardcore Firefox fans are now happy Chrome users. By 2017, Mozilla had become painfully aware of their browser shortcomings. In November of 2017, Mozilla released a major update of Firefox with version 57. This included not only a modern logo, but also a new interface design, codenamed Photon, and a new rendering engine that was almost twice as fast as the previous engine. On top of a renewed focus on speed and user experience, Mozilla has also doubled down on privacy with features like Lockwise, Containers, Tracker Blocking, and even expanding into a paid VPN service. Said CNET.com's Bart Farkas about the browser's update, Firefox Quantum may not have the giant market share that Google Chrome commands, but it's a highly reliable, safe, and fast browser that's worthy of consideration if you're looking to switch from another browsing platform. Will all of this be enough to convince the internet to give Firefox another shot? The browser definitely has caught back up, both in terms of performance and experience. And every year, people grow more wary of large tech companies harvesting their data. If nothing else, Firefox has a lot of experience reincarnating itself from the ashes of previous stumbles. Thanks for watching the history of Mozilla Firefox, a Smarty Flix production made exclusively for Tilvids.com. Tilvids is an ad-free edutainment video community. Consider checking out the website at Tilvids.com. If you enjoy, spread the word or consider donating.